see. Is anybody in? Anybody in yet? Uh, let me pop that up. Is this life? Just be careful with that box, Ruby. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, guys. We'll let slowly people come in. Just want to make sure the audio is good. Let's see. Audio is good. Let's see. Yep, that's all good. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. What's up, Tommy? Thanks you are here. If you can moderate for a little bit, that would be great. Say hello, Ruby. Say hello. Now, the title might be a little bit misleading. I'll let a little bit more people come in here and I will explain what's going on. Ruby, entertain everybody for a second. I'll be right back. Right here, Ruby. Right here. What are you doing? Where's Hunter? Huh? Where are you, girl? Huh? What are you doing? Are you showing your thingy in a camera, Ruby? Yeah. All right, we got some people in here now. Hi, did you say hello? Hi guys, how's everybody doing? How is everybody doing? You love this box, don't you? Be careful, there's sharp stuff in there. All right, we got some people in. So, how's the quality? Can everybody hear me good? Is the sound good? Yakshimash, Peter. Very well. All right, let me adjust this. So, it's Sunday, guys. Uh, obviously, the shop is closed. I come here on Sundays to feed these little two guys, you know, make sure they have the food. Um, that everything is nice and smooth. Say hello, honey. All right, let me put you away. Here, here. Let me put her back. So I haven't done, I haven't done a live in a while, guys. Probably a month, maybe a month and a half. And this is a great opportunity because Molly reached out to me. Um, Molly and Chris, they're viewers of the channel for a very, very long time. And Molly reached out and he says, listen, my husband, today is his birthday. She reached out yesterday. <coughs> and of course, Ruby is going to chime in. Um, she reached out yesterday and she says, his birthday is on Sunday. His name is Chris. He's got a few years on me. He's, uh, he's 59. Chris, if you're watching, happy birthday. I would sing to you, but I don't know how. <laughs> so, um, she says, she says, I don't know what to get him anymore for his birthday. You know, it would be so cool. He watches you all the time. And by the way, they're flippers as well. They love going to estate sale, garage sales, you know, <coughs> Ruby, please. And she says, can you make a video and say happy birthday to him? So Chris, happy 59th birthday, man. He's a Chicago boy. He said he grew up. Molly said he grew up in 70s and 80s in, in Chicago in a city. So, yeah. Chicago boy, happy birthday to you. <laughs> um, and then I got a few things that I want to show off because I had a lot of messages on a, on a video that I did probably two weeks ago when I sold a bunch of knives to the viewers that came in and I had more knives come in and I just want to kind of share them with you guys and and talk about it. And if you guys have any questions, I'm monitoring the chat here as much as I can. Uh, somebody says audio horrible. No, okay. Everybody's telling you happy birthday, Chris. So um, are you in Crystal Lake? Yes, I am in Crystal Lake. So let me say hi to a few people. Uh, hunting with Tripler, how are you, buddy? Uh, G Money, Tempa, Sunny Me. Oh man, there's a lot of people, so there's almost a couple hundred people in here. Nurse Flipper, how are you, girl? 
All right. Marvy Marv, Brett Armstrong, Daniel S. I'm going to put her away in a cage and I'm going to give her some food because she's going to keep doing that. Right? Are you going to keep screaming? Here. Okay, I know you want some. There's some treats for you. And there's some treats for you. Sorry guys, there's nobody else here in the shop and if she doesn't get any attention, that's what happens. She starts squawking like crazy, so. Ah, Pete, my man, how is the taco running? Very well, very well. Although I'll, I think I'm gonna be upgrading soon, choosing between a Cybertruck from Tesla or Rivian. Uh, both of them are coming by the end of this year. Oh, I think, I think Cybertruck next year, but so it's it's got to be a decision that is going to be made soon. What's up, Zahir? How are you, buddy? We can't sell knives on eBay here in the UK. That's correct. I know a lot of people will get uh, will get in trouble selling knives in UK. Here, I want to show a few. Hello from Scotland. Awesome. From England, oh man, man, we got people from all over the place. What time? What time it is in England right now? It's not that late yet. Maybe 10 p.m. For yeah, about 10:30. So first, I want to show off. Um, you know the video that I made with the last knife that I bought, and it was uh, a replica of 1918, a trench World War One knife that turned out to be a, a bust for me. This is something even better. All right, honey, stay, stay away. Be careful, girl. Super, super uh, dangerous knife. I think this was actually completely banned by Geneva Convention because of that triple blade on each side. Now this is 1917. It's got original markings here on, uh, on the um, shield, uh, wooden handle. Look at those knuckles. LF and C 1917, crazy wicked looking knife. I mean, these, I don't have a um, scabbard for this. If I would, uh, this probably, you know, easy a thousand dollar knife here, maybe even more, maybe like twelve hundred bucks, because this one is in really, really good condition. Yeah, fantastic piece of history here. Now, without without a scabbard, um, probably gonna be asking about six, seven hundred dollars. I mean, the the condition on the knife is spectacular. Yeah, so if any of you guys are interested, I know there's a lot of collectors. When I was showing off the 1918 from World War One, I, I had a lot of messages. So, and if you're watching this on a replay, there'll be a there'll be a, my email in the description. You can always reach out, and we can wheel and deal. Let me catch up a little bit here with the chat. Thanks, Tommy. I appreciate it. Um, and Tommy just put a link to uh, my website in the chat. Uh, you can always contact me through there too as well. So, and there's also a link to the eBay store. To, everything goes through through our website. Cheap as network. Pete, glad I caught you live. Well, I'm glad uh, you caught me live too. Where's Adrian? Good question. I don't want to spoil it because his video are coming out slowly. They're scheduled uh, like two or three weeks back, um, but he's sailing. He's in the middle of water right now, enjoying himself. So you guys got to keep up with his channel. Uh, Pete, how is the new eBay room coming along? I don't know exactly what you mean, new eBay room. We rearrange our room when we keep all the inventory. It came out fantastic. If that's what you're talking about, so. What? Really? Philly? That's a great question. How does it feel to rip people off? 
hmm, I tell people on loud microphone on the street, come into my shop and sell me stuff. Good one, man. <laughs> Everybody has options, right, to buy and sell and trade. So people can do whatever they want. Oh, Justin, I'm glad your wife enjoyed the purse. Fantastic. So once again, when you're seeing a title, I know now we got a little bit more people in. Chris, if you're watching this, happy birthday, man. Happy 59th birthday, Chicago boy. Uh, hope you're having a wonderful day. So next, let me, uh, let me show you guys this guy. This is a British bayonet. This is 1888. Not a whole lot of money here. Still overall decent condition. All original. The blade is solid. Um, this is before, you know, obviously World War I. Very cool piece. Not a whole lot of money here. Probably anywhere between 100 to 150 bucks. Very cool piece. Then we have... What do we got here? This guy. This is actually... Uh, with a scabbard, this is actually ACS. So that's Alexander, Alexander Kappel, German, German police uh, stag. Now, blade is still good. The handle is really nice. Look at look at that German eagle at the end here. But the most important thing on it, it's gone. That it should be right here. And it's missing. Uh, you would have had a German eagle right here, I think, with the swastika on it, and that's actually gone. Scabbard, seen a better day as well. Shows a lot of pitting on all the way around on this metal. The leather sheet is still solid, and the blade overall is pretty, pretty decent. This is this is the logo. Yeah, but by having this nut here, uh, that takes a lot of value away from the, this knife. Come on, Rube. You guys, can you guys see the honey? She's enjoying the box. <laughs> Why are you laying on top of these knives? Huh? You crazy. So, this actually, if it's in a great condition with the scabbard, this can go for pretty penny as well. Eight to nine hundred dollars, but I think... In this condition, without the main emblem, this is probably, I'm going to be asking, maybe about $250, $300. Shame it's missing that, but it is what it is. So, but a very cool piece. Polish Mafia. No such thing, man. Doesn't exist. Uh, let's see. Can I answer here a couple questions? Can you get honey to jump on your shoulder? Uh, probably not right now. She's super lazy. She was just actually chilling in her bed, which is... Can you guys see that? Right there. Across the counter on that counter right there. She loves that bed. All right. Yes, I'm keeping the bed. So many people reached out about that bed. So... The, what happened was a lady came in with a bunch of dolls, American dolls. We bought the dolls and this was part of the deal. And Honey jumped right in that bed and says, this is mine. So we had to buy it. Many people reached out and said, I just want to buy this bed. Make sure it stays in a shop for, for Honey. Don't worry, guys. I'm not selling the bed. She loves it so much. Every day she sleeps in it at least three, four, five hours. I don't know what's about that bed, but she loves that thing. The microphone, yes, the microphone, fantastic. Um, the the D104 gold one, fantastic CB mic, love that thing. I priced it actually very high. I wanted to have it sit here in the shop for a while. It's such a cool piece. Maybe we can go later there. I'll show it off. All right, let's see. What else we got? We have, we have this. Come on, huh? be careful. Be careful. They're sharp. So look at this wicked knife here. There is no name on a blend, blade. There's no markings. It does have a weird looking wooden handle. And this thing is long. This blade on this, on this knife is probably 14 inches long. 
I mean, look, look how long this thing is. The handle is some kind of wood. And of course, goes all the way through. You can see the shank inside. No name. I have no idea what this could be worth. I don't know. Probably put her out here for 40, 50 bucks. Who knows what this It's handmade for sure. So it's a weird, weird looking knife. Any ideas? Honey bed of knives. Yeah. Guess that's not a bayonet. No, it's not. A butcher knife. I don't think it's a butcher knife. Pete, please make some fridge magnets. Craigslist Hunter. Wet chicken. Honey in a box. <laughs> yeah, a good idea, right? Do people still like magnets for uh, for fridges? Uh, check out this bad boy. No, no scabbard on this one. I wish it had scabbard because people want this guy with the scabbard um, it's got all correct markings okay this is also world war ii german sa f dick knife that's that's his logo right there now the blade is a little uh, little rough especially on this side there's a lot of pitting going on almost like rust coming out it has um acid etching all the way across and it's uh it says something alice alice for Do deutschland very awesome piece this mahogany or cherry i think maybe it's cherry uh handle very sought after dagger also good blade this is probably like a, a 11 to 12 inch blade on this now if it had a scabbard this would be up there as well. This is also like an eight to nine hundred dollar knife, but the way that it sits right now without the scabbard and and uh, and the condition of the blade is is rough. Maybe I'm gonna be asking like three three fifty. So now once again, this collection, this collection also came in from the same gentleman that brought me the collection before, and then there is more. So he's helping out this. His, uh, his friend passed away and his wife uh, is, is, is selling off his uh, husband collection who's been a collector for many, many years. So I got a feeling there'll be a lot more stuff coming in uh, from him. Very, very interesting. Now here's, here's another one with no name. Now this is more like almost a butcher knife. Uh, <laughs> Also long blade. This is probably 13, 14 inch blade. It's got some rust on it. No name. The handle looks more like almost <laughs> a kitchen knife. So uh, th this is just just a weird kind of dagger. I don't know. I don't know if this actually sh this sheet belongs to it or not. It does fit actually pretty well. Um, this is so long you can almost like a small machete you can go in a jungle and start chopping with this guy extremely sharp though but it's probably 40 50 dollar knife here in the shop you know so yeah mike go away you troll i hope everybody's behaving uh, in the chat honey in the box yes do you ship to scotland uh, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Reach out. We can talk. Greetings from sunny Florida. I was just there. Nice. Greetings to you. Doesn't these German knives attract the wrong crowd? It's history. Not really a wrong crowd. No, no, it's history. I mean, so this is this is a cool piece. I mean, there's lots of collectors for all kinds of stuff. Just like, you know, people are collecting American knives. There's lots of people that are collecting German knives, you know. Uh, military stuff, it's extremely collectible. So this is a Red Cross World War II. Comes with the original sheet. This is EM uh, Dagger. Um, fantastic overall condition. The blade is spectacular look at the teeth on this guy so um 
EMTs would would use these. And these, you know, look, the point, there is no point on this knife. It's cut off. And even the scabbard on this is, is rounded like that, so it fits perfectly. Um, they would use like these in a field if they needed to cut a rope or something um, out in a field. This actually is pretty dull blade on this side. It's mainly the pointy teeth on here. Um, they're important on this on this crazy dagger. Uh, it does have the German swastika on there. This is very collectible knife. Um, the sheet is also in a great condition. Really good condition, actually. This is probably one of the best knives out of this collection. Uh, this also can go for um, for close to a thousand dollars on this guy, you know. So there is a little bit of rust on the screws, actually, on the handle, and a little bit of pitting at uh, all the way around here. But it, it, that. You know, that's original patina, so that's all good. Fits perfectly, nice, tight fit on that scabbard. Probably going to be asking about $650, $700 for this knife in here. Um, they can go as high as 1000 bucks. So that's it for knives, honey, right? Empty box now for sleeping. All right, let's answer some questions. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, Ruby. God, wash. What's the problem? What's the problem, girl? You want more food? Give me a second, guys. No, you're not getting anything. I already gave you treats. How about some chips? Want some chips? Your favorite. Yeah, there you go. I'm, tell, I'm telling you guys, you know, on Sunday when there's nobody here, all these these animals, they want a lot of attention. So, but that's why I'm here. Okay. Do you sell more items in a store or on eBay? Right now, it's probably about 50-50. It was heavily uh, last year when we were in the middle of pandemic. Obviously, uh, eBay took over. Was, was the most sales were done. On eBay and then after we reopen in June it slowly started turning around a little bit right now it's about 50 50 uh, as you guys know I do quite a bit of sales to the viewers some of the cool things that I show off on the videos so that helps a lot but as, as of right now probably 50 50 those unusual things are actually a lot easier to to move on eBay you know you're the Ponsters of Chicago. No, nothing scripted here, my friend. Nothing scripted. Okay, gonna. I will reach out to us. Would you like to buy some knives? Sure, yeah, reach out. Like I said, uh, later on, there'll be a link below this video to actually every video that you guys go on. There should be always my email that you can. That's the best way to reach me. I mean, you can do Facebook Messenger, uh, you can do some DMs on um, on Instagram, but uh, emails, I always stay on top of it, so that's the best way to reach me. And you can go always on my on uh, uh, Trading Post website, and there's all the links through everything. You know, if you want to buy Honey and Ruby t-shirt, you want to check out my eBay store, you want to send me email, the best way is... Uh, Trading Post website. Let me answer a few questions here. Uh, which email I prefer, Tommy? If you can put in uh, deep in the city seven at gmail.com. Do you ship to Canada? Yes, I do. Yeah, we can arrange it. Oh, I appreciate that. Will the rocker? Yeah, hit that like button. Let's see some thumbs up. Or if you feel the other way, you can always, you know, thumb it down. What happened to the Chicago bank sign? Which sign are you talking about? Chicago bank sign. Oh, this is probably like two years ago. Is that, is that the bronze sign? It's sold. 
sold, I think I got like a couple hundred bucks for it, something like that, or one, I can't remember now, it's been a while. Where's Adrian? He's sailing. That's exactly right, Tommy. Deep, deep, deep in the city seven at gmail.com. Can we see the video games? Sure. Uh, I don't have many now. I have to turn the light on for that. Let me flip the camera here. Hold on, let me turn the light on and the cabinets. So what I got right now, let's see. No Nintendo 64. I got some Sega in here. NES. So if you guys spot anything in here, you're more than welcome to uh, message later. Some DS games there. You can pause the video later. Not a whole lot of games. Games go so quick that the selection changes all the time. What's up, Tesla Picker Dave? How are you, buddy? All right, let me switch this back. Jewelry. Um... I think everything on Sunday is put away in a safe, so I can't really show you that. Um, when the shop is closed, either for the night or on a weekend when we are shut down here on Sunday, everything goes to that big safe that you guys see behind me there. Uh, see that big, the boat is sitting on it. So everything is stored away there, so I can't show you the jewelry. Any motorcycle stuff? Uh, Probably just a couple helmets. That's all I have right now. And no bikes. Do you get any Pokemon cards? I do not deal with any Pokemon cards. And I also do not deal with sports cards. I probably should. Especially with sport cards. They're pretty hot now. It's just... I don't know enough about them. Um, my guys don't know enough about them. And there's so much out there that it's just insane. Any CB radios? No CB radios. I do. Uh, maybe I do have a couple. We'll go back there later and we'll look. How much did that Mint Super Nintendo sell for? I believe we got $950 for it. It was all original packaging. Still everything was sealed. Yeah, this was a nice piece. Any nice guitars? Believe it or not, I'm almost completely out out of guitars. Um, not many musical instruments have been coming in. I'm looking at it right now. I got maybe only three guitars hanging back there, and they're all cheapies too. So I don't know. I sound like I don't have anything in the shop. I don't have this. I don't have that. Hi from UK. 80s horror fan 88. Hi. I have some, what are you looking for? All kinds of guitars, all kinds of musical instruments. We do very well here with musical instruments. So if you want to message me, if you got some stuff that you want to sell, shoot me an email. Pete, did the pandemic hurt the benefit in your brick and mortar store? Yeah, sure it did hit. I mean, listen, my store is designed for the inventory to come in, right? So. If the store is closed and nothing is coming in, eventually you're depleting your good stuff. Um, we put a lot of stuff online when we shut down, but still, you know, eventually you run out, out of the good stuff and you start just putting in stuff that it's kind of leftovers. So we were almost shut down for three months. By that second month, I was hurting. I mean, there was not you know, <laughs> much selection here in the shop. And it after we reopened, it took us another three to four months to get back into the rhythm again. And slowly people started showing up and bringing things, you know. Yeah, it sucked. Uh, this is going a little fast here. Give Hanya a promotion. She deserves it. Absolutely. I agree. Somebody's asking here a cool question in Polish. Wracasz do domu, aby zwiedzać Polskę. 
You know, I last time in Poland I was it's been a while, 2010 or 11. 2011, I think. Uh, haven't been back since. Actually, we were planning me and my wife this year, actually last year. Then pandemic hit, and everything went to crap, right? So, um, yeah, I don't know when is the next trip that we're gonna do uh, do do back in Europe or or Poland or whatever. We'll see what happens. I mean, this is slowly coming back to normal, right? So. How do you feel about eBay taking out PayPal for seller payments? I'll feel great. I don't care which method, really. As long as the money is coming in, I don't care if it's PayPal. I don't care if it's their new managed payment system. It really doesn't matter. I believe actually it's a lot easier for us now that I only have to deal with eBay. If something's wrong, I don't have to deal with eBay. And then somebody's disputing with PayPal and you got to deal with PayPal. So it's all good. I have no issues and the new managed payments I have no troubles uh, money's flowing in pretty much on daily basis um, I had a couple char chargebacks through credit cards they've been resolved so so far I can't complain there was no no issues and then I've been on managed payments now for quite some time long time do I have any cell phones for sale actually cell phones are becoming a big problem lots of these companies like Verizon or T-Mobile or AT&T they give incentives for people to bring the old phones in and they give you decent credits for them so not many used phones are showing up here um, and if they are people know exactly know what they are worth and it's so easy to sell them like on Facebook marketplace and stuff that my actually yeah i got three phones in there i got a couple iphones and one of the galaxies there so thanks appreciate it c riley what's the question here thanks for a super chat you really don't have to do that hope you're doing well peter thanks for all the ebay help over the years appreciate it thank you my friend yeah cell phones are not coming in at all so it's tough it's it you know stuff it's it's trending all kinds of stuff um you know one year we get a lot of a certain item next year uh it's not coming in like for example for the last two years i was having a lot of hunting equipment coming in fishing equipment coming in well guess what this year nothing like that is coming in why because people are doing lots of outdoors activities mainly due to the pandemic right so i have no everybody's holding on to their fishing rods or or their bows and it's just it's just weird how things change you know love honey and ruby appreciate it from japan wow what time i want to know what time is in japan right now isn't that like 12 hours ahead or maybe even more Do you buy and sell on Facebook Marketplace? Yes, we do a lot of business on Facebook Marketplace. It drives a lot of traffic to the shop. A lot. Um, every day we post on Facebook Marketplace at least three to five different posts go live on Facebook. And at any given time we have at least probably three... 250 to 300 posts, I think, on, on Facebook Marketplace. It drives a lot of traffic, which is great for business because a lot of times somebody will come in to just buy something and first time in a shop and that creates more sales and spreads the word. So Facebook uh, is, is tremendous. What do I need to have a place to sell on eBay? What do you mean? What do I need to have in place to sell on eBay? Ooh, that's a loaded question. I mean, uh, uh, but overall, it's not very hard to set up eBay, right? There's tons of tons of creators out there that have step by step set up um, how to open up your eBay account, what to look for, what to get, what to sell. 7 or 5 a.m. in Japan. Wow. 7 a.m. So that's 12. So it's like 15 hours ahead. 14. Greetings from Wisconsin. Next door neighbor. 
I would say go pack, but you know, the Bears. Unfortunately, yes, Chicago Bears forever for me. Scotland. South Dakota. Wow, you guys are from all over the place. We're in Germany. Man, we got people from all over the place. Any new scammers? <laughs> so, you know, it's funny. There's there's always somebody that will show up here and there that tries to, you know, bring something that it's, you know, fishy or or just weird, you know. People, people think they're smart, but nothing actually worthy filming or that I caught lately on a camera, you know, so. Enheim, buy, sell and trade. Pete, was it complicated to separate with your business partner after all the years, finances, inventory, etc.? Uh, so I think the biggest thing it wasn't the the business separation i think mentally um it was tough thing for both of us because we had we've been partners for very long time and friends for very long time so um that was i think the toughest thing to like yeah i, I had to be it, it, that's why I named that video even like a bad divorce, you know, not bad, but but it, it's it was a divorce for us. We we've been great friends and great partners for so many years. So um, till till now, now it's almost six months. Time is flying almost six months since we separated. And uh, there's not really a day that goes by that I don't think about, you know, Adrian and things that, you know, it's it's always easier to make decisions in this kind of business when you have a partner that you can ask a question that you can you know if you made a bit but now everything is on me so it's definitely uh definitely but far as the finances and like inventory no we just made an agreement uh we knew exactly what we had and how we have to do this no there was no issues Okay, hi Pete. I hope you are doing well. Thank you for everything you do. How do you try to prevent people scamming you? You mean in a shop or online? Um, actually, in a shop, it's actually very easy. When you're dealing with people face to face, uh, you heard so many stories over the years that it's actually very easy to say right away to somebody or within 30 seconds, you know, they're up to something no good. So it's relatively easy. Uh, online, a little bit more trickier. Scammers are going to be out there. There's not much you can do. You just got to go with the flow. Um, you know, you can always try to minimize by doing certain things. But, you know, there's always going to be some scammers out there that try to take advantage of you. But that's extremely small percentage of the business. And it's just it's not a big deal. I mean, it is what it is. It, it comes with that kind of business. What time is it here now? What time is it here? It's 5 p.m. How do I send gift to your shop? Um, there's also address on uh, under every video in the description. If you want to send a gift, send it here to the shop. Uh, Peter, out of the items you have purchased over the years, what was the most expensive item? Uh, expensive? I wanted to think about it for a second. I mean, lots of jewelry, lots of expensive watches uh, come here quite often, actually. And I really don't show that kind of stuff on, um, on the videos. Uh, but I, I, I have to say probably, you know, some expensive watches, Omegas, Rolexes, things like that. Um, some musical instruments, you know, but some older Gibsons, guitars, you know, that are well into thousands and thousands of dollars. So, but for the most part, guys, it's, it's the bread and butter stuff that keeps me afloat. You know, it's, it's 
the simple guitar for a couple hundred dollars, some vintage gaming system, um, retro, you know, electronics and vintage electronics. I mean, just things that people can afford. Not many people are dishing out thousands of dollars on, on you know, stuff like, like these knives that I was showing off earlier here, you know, stuff like this that it's average collector could, you know, that likes knives can afford something like this. They can pay five, six hundred dollars. Not many people can afford, you know, spending a fifty thousand dollar on some samurai sword or something crazy like that, you know. So, okay, this chat is moving way too fast here. Oh, pozdrawiam z Warszawy. That's my hometown. Miss Warsaw sometimes, you know. I left Warsaw when I was 13 years old. It's been a while. I'm 50 now, you guys do the math. It's been a long time. Oh, thank you, I appreciate it. Do you miss your partner? Yes, I do. Yes, I do, I miss Adrian. Although I'm getting used to it now, uh, Ryan is back and he's a big help. Um, it's it's it took us a few months to get again into the rhythm without having adrian here so things are in place now things are running smooth um for the first time i was able to take a few days away like you know disappear almost for a week uh and things ran really smooth which is which is hard to do when you're running your own business so when are you going to retire i i don't know I like what I do. I it doesn't it, honestly. It, it, yes, it is work, but it doesn't feel like work. You know, I, I show up here every day and I go on my picks and um, I try to entertain you guys. And I have my employees, my animals. I love what I do. I don't know another 10, 15, 20 years. My wife keeps telling me that I'm going to be doing till <laughs> doing this till the day I die. But. Um, Why did Adrian leave? Uh, he's pursuing his dream. He wanted to sail around the world. Since he was a little kid, that was his dream. And he was finally able to do it. He was restoring his boat for the last couple of years. He, oh man, that thing is beautiful. He, uh, and now he can, he can afford it. He's doing it. More power to him. I'm a little bit jealous. How are the record sales? Um, very good. I can keep the LPs, the vinyl in stock. Uh, it's just, it fly off the shelf. I mean, records are selling. I, we just picked up actually on Saturday, like 40 records. Actually, I can show some of them. Uh, they sell extremely well. Vinyl is hot, super hot. Polashek uh, TV. Grasz w kosza, Piotrek. Do I play basketball? Well, I used to play basketball a lot. I actually enjoyed basketball a lot. Uh, I played a lot of soccer too. Since my accident a long time ago, now it's been 12 years. I can run. I can play. It's. I have... Uh, my, my foot is screwed up. I got 16 screws and a couple plates holding my heel. So my mobility is very limited. I can't run anymore. It sucks. Uh, but I'm glad I can still walk around, you know, and be on my feet. So, but I enjoy basketball tremendously. When I was younger, I was playing a lot of basketball. Craigslist Hunter, is there anything you regret selling? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. You know, I try to... I try not to think about stuff that comes in and it'd be like, oh yeah, I gotta have that. Because if if that was my <laughs> if if that was my mon mindset, I would be a total hoarder and my wife would leave me. I guarantee you, because if I would be bringing home things left and right. <clears throat> so no, I I really don't regret selling anything, you know. And a lot of times. I enjoy my vintage electronics, guys. I really do. I like that stuff. But I get the option that I always have, you know, 15, 20 pieces at home 
on my display and I get to swap things around, right? I'll enjoy something for a little bit, something more cool comes in, I'll just swap things around, but I'm not one of those guys that really, you know, this is business, stuff comes in and it goes. I really don't regret anything. Uh, yeah, many people tell me that Honey needs, I actually, there is a, the, she has her own channel. I created a channel a year ago or a year and a half ago. It's called Honey. Honey the Calico, I think, something like that. And uh, there's only maybe four or five videos on there. I just don't have enough time to make content that I'm making for this channel. And then also separate, you know, I, I'm running a business. Uh, yes, I am YouTube creator and I do enjoy it, but it's just not enough time. There's only so many, so many hours in a day, guys. I appreciate everyone coming in. We got almost 700 people, guys. Love you. I, I, it's amazing. Um, and if you're looking at the title, Stolat, happy birthday, Chris. Chris, if you're watching, um, happy birthday, man. Happy birthday, uh, sh Chicago boy. So, just reading some comments here, guys. Love your channel. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yes, you can, uh, Ruby and Honey t-shirts are available for sale. Uh, once again, you can go on my website, Trading Post, and there's all the links to eBay store, uh, t-shirts, you can get everything there. How long this stream has been on now? How long we've been on? 45 minutes, okay. Yeah, we can go on for a little bit longer. Any other questions, guys? Any updates on Army Vet? that was living inside the van. Uh, so I haven't heard actually since the pandemic started, I haven't heard anything about Kevin. I, well, at least I didn't talk to him. I do have one person that occasionally keeps contact with him. And the last I heard was last summer that he had his own place, that he was doing good had an operation done on his food and that he was doing great. But as far as like him stopping by and saying hello, that hasn't happened. So hopefully he'll stop by one day. So, but, but I think he's doing well. Hello from Bolton, England. Hello, hello, hello. Did I sell the reproduction knife? No, it's actually right right over there if you can see still laying there yep but it, and I, as i was showing earlier i have even a better piece this is a real deal this is not a reproduction this is the 1917 and you can see the logo right there made by lf and c 1917 uh, i mean this is a crazy wicked dagger and like I said earlier at the beginning of the video, I believe that this was uh, completely banned by Geneva Convention, that, that sharp blade that has three sharp edges on it. Um, yeah, this is a definitely a wicked knife. This is going to be available for sale. So any of these knives, if you want to guys go back. <clears throat> to the beginning of the video I showed off all this collection and there'll be more there's more coming so I'm I'm super excited about these because he's bringing me all kinds of stuff so what was your biggest struggle when you came to USA uh, what do you think I did not know one word of English really like that was the biggest struggle and when i came here i went you know straight to eighth grade i came here when i finished seventh grade in poland and it was like sitting in a classroom looking at your teacher and <laughs> you had no idea what was going on it took me a while that was the biggest struggle probably six to seven months it was a it was a shocker you know and and i think after a year 
it, it got a little bit easier. So thanks, appreciate for the super chat. You really, uh, you really, the guys don't have to do that. Pete, how are things with your bro? Witam z Nowego Yorku. I don't know if you're talking about Adrian. He's doing great. Any Native American art come through your shop? Yeah, I, I get some. I don't think I have anything at the moment. <clears throat> Actually, uh, look at this cool Pepsi, uh, old Pepsi crate. And in that crate, the guy brought me like 100 LPs and I only bought about 40 maybe not even that many but I said if I'm gonna buy these LPs from you I gotta buy some uh, I gotta buy this crate so I gave him all the LPs back and I bought this crate because I think it's so cool look at the graphics yeah I'm gonna flip it around look at the graphics on this old Pepsi crate Aren't they cool? Love stuff like that. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. We got John Lennon. John Lennon. <clears throat> we got more Lennon. And these are in decent condition. We got the white album from the Beatles here. Somebody look, somebody put my logo on it, the peace sign. <laughs> so that takes away a little bit of the value but the record is still in good condition a lot of beetles here revolver the beetles the beetles story never heard that record the early years how early what year is that what do you mean early that's 1981 this is some kind of this is a reproduction later. I don't know what originally, what year was that record. Don't shoot me. I am only the piano player, Elton John. That was a great movie. You guys see the Rocket Man with Elton John? I didn't know that he was such a wicked guy. Paul McCartney here. More John Lennon. There's lots of Beatles stuff in this collection here. The Rush. Great band. Fantastic band. Love The Rush. Black Sabbath. I, am I boring you guys? Should I keep showing these up? There's only about 30 records here. To connect with. Thanks, Tommy. I appreciate it. What do you pay for the record? All depends on the title. All depends on the condition. The sleeve, the vinyl, um, just like a Fleetwood Mac, like this one. The condition of the sleeve is is decent. Got a couple of creases here on the corners. The vinyl, the vinyl itself, let's see. I would say a little bit of dust, but there's no scratches. This is a very clean record. Uh, after you after you clean this record, it would be close to a very good, if not mint, condition. Um, so this is probably a record that will sell here, Fleetwood Mac, uh, about seven dollars. I would probably pay about two, three bucks for this. Now then, if we go to something like this. Black Sabbath um, condition of the sleeve is eh, not even good corners are pretty beat up there's some water damage on the edges look at the sleeve on the inside is that a mouse action here or just deterioration from time and the record a little dirty but actually no scratches on this one. So it just needs cleaning. So something like this, I'll probably would pay 
five to seven dollars and this is probably a twenty dollar record because the condition the sleeve is not the best but the lp the vinyl itself is decent just needs cleaning so it all depends on a title you know who is it what year is it first pressing um there's there's a lot that comes to play sticks Elvis has left the building. Look at that. You know, Elvis stuff completely fell off. Elvis stuff does not sell at all. Let's see. This one comes with some kind of booklet. Interesting. What year is this? Do, do, do. 1976 some history about Elvis you know I never was a fan of Elvis uh, although lately I kind of enjoy some songs from Elvis you know let's see what how good is this LP now this LP is phenomenal condition Maybe a little bit dusty, but there's not a scratch on it. I don't know if you guys can see. Yeah, I mean, it's really nice condition. So, but once again, I have a lot of Elvis stuff here and it's just not, not moving lately. Yeah, market is completely filled up. Look at that, animals, Pink Floyd. And this one is in very good condition overall. Shows a little bit of wear. But uh, let's see what kind of record we have here. Nice. Clean. Yeah, record is the vinyl itself is close to being mint. That's good because this is a nice pricey record you know anything Pink Floyd brings good money huge following the best of rain here I heap I don't know I don't even know who that is Uriah heap you guys know who that is I have no idea what year is this 1976 produced by Gary Braun from Hit Records Production in London Emerson Emerson Lake and Palmer a little bit of yellowing on the sleeve vinyl good condition I can't believe you everybody's still watching it's like this guy is showing off some vinyl and people are watching I can sell any of my Pink Floyd Beatles or Zeppelin I should <laughs> yeah Pink Floyd Zeppelin you know all these mega artists they're always gonna be popular you know ACDC Led Zeppelin um, people want that stuff 10 years after recorded live. Interesting. Some Carpenters Christmas. Never heard that record. The Heart. This was one of their first. Like, look at this. This one is actually. There's a lot of times that it happens like this, a separation of the cover. That's an actually easy fix to glue it back together, you know? Moisture does the trick and these sleeves will come apart like that. What year was this? 1980. It's a two-piece album. Also in great condition. Oh, no. I don't know if you guys can see it. See those scratches on this one? This is bad. This is gonna be a 99 cents record here. I do have 
one bin always here of 99 cents record that people just they still can you know maybe not all the songs are scratched up the second album was actually pretty good but the first one was pretty bad who's calling I'm not answering right now let's see trading post how can i help you Hello? Talk to me. No? Not today? It said private call and somebody hanged up right away. <laughs> All right. Let me put that back. All right. Any other questions? Nice seeing you yesterday. Made it back home safe. Hey, Ernest. How are you? Ernest. Bro oh, I got to show you guys this. What he brought me yesterday. I gotta go in the back and get that out. So he he brought me this these two books about 1969 Rolling Stones tour. They're phenomenal. Let's see if I can. I'm gonna go grab that really quick. I think boys put that in the back. Oh, but it's packed. This is gonna take some unpacking. They're expensive. Really expensive book. Honey, entertain everybody here. I'll be right back, guys. So Ernest brought me this book, actually two of them, let me move these knives. Trading Post, how can I help you? No. No. Uh, no, not really. What am I going to do with 10 pizzas? Okay, thanks. Thanks for prank. Thanks for pranking me. I, you know, private call. Little Caesars called. They said somebody's delivering ten pizzas to me. Funny guys, very funny. Uh, I'm gonna be getting off the air pretty, pretty soon here because people are funny. So this is. This is all original packaging here. This is a book. And I want to keep this all original packaging because if I sell this, I want to ship it exactly the way. All right, somebody's having fun here. This is a book. This is a book, Let It Bleed. Look at this thing. Can you guys see it? Isn't this crazy? Look at this beautiful book. 
this is um, the artist and pho photographer on this is Ethan Russell. And this is the Rolling Stones 1969 US tour. Um, I want to be really gentle. It's hard to show, guys. But this is this is a complete tour uh, from 1969. I have two of these books. They can go for pretty penny. Trading Post, how can I help you? Hello? Somebody hang up again. So, uh, these, these books can go for like four, five hundred dollars, depending what's on the market. It's crazy. It's just unreal. This is, this is really special. And there was only, I believe, 2,500 of these books made. And mine is like 2,300 something. They're both num they're all numbered. And on the first page, Actually, I was wrong. There's a signature. This is a book, 2,353 out of 2,600. All right, guys, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to end this stream because people are having too much fun pranking me now, right now, call after call. So this is no fun anymore. The call is coming from inside the shop. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Ernest, anyway, thank you so much for uh, for these books. And thank you for all the equipment that you brought me. A lot of cool, cool stuff. And it was also a pleasure of meeting your wife. I'm going to take my time putting this away. But this is a very, very cool piece. Love it. Let me slide this back on. Amazing piece of history here for sure. Yep. Look how big is this book. Guys, thanks everyone for coming by. I appreciate it. This phone is going to keep ringing. Oh, let's see. Trading post. Yes, it is. I oh, I appreciate that, my friend. You are live right now with me on a on a stream. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate. It. At least I'm getting a phone call, not from a pranker. <laughs> You having a good time? Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll disconnect the phone. That's a good idea, man. Ah, okay. You got it, man. What's your name? From Pennsylvania, Georgia. All right. Thank you, man. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. That's a good idea. Honey, are you enjoying yourself? Are you enjoying yourself? Phone is off the hook. Phone is off the hook. Okay, I can answer a few more questions here. Honey is gonna fall. Honey, are you gonna fall? No, she's not gonna fall. She's not gonna fall. She's having fun. She loves boxes. How is uh, my friend doing that had COVID-19? Deb is doing, uh, she's doing okay. Deb, the pinching pesos. I haven't talked to her in a while, but she's doing okay. Midwest Picker. How do I sign up to be interviewed in your new chat room? So it's an excellent question, Midwest Picker. There won't be any sign-up sheet. The main thing is we have to go past this pandemic because as of right now, I really can't do anything in that interview room um till this thing passes by you know or for or at least you know most people are vaccinated or whatever it might be it's just hard to sit in a room eight by eight and invite a bunch of people there if if this thing is still happening you know what i mean so um and then when it opens up finally it's going to be strictly 
just show up, call me, and and we'll do the interview. There's no reason to to sign up, but I think it will be really cool. I would love to talk a bunch of different pickers and interesting people. So where's Vicky? She's at home. Today's Sunday. Nobody's here. We are closed. I just figured I wanted to do a quick live stream um, and wish happy birthday to Chris if you are watching. Uh, Molly, his wife, m sent me a beautiful email the other day telling me that her husband, she doesn't know what to buy him for a uh, birthday anymore. She says, and he loves watching you, Pete. If you can make uh, mention him on a, on a video, that would be great. So I'm doing a live stream. Chris, happy birthday again, buddy. Chris is from Chicago. Well, he used to at least live in Chicago. Grew up in Chicago in the 70s and 80s. Who's Chris? He's just a viewer like you. Somebody reached out and I'm saying happy birthday, Chris. Pete, question. Okay, Tommy, what's up? From Canada. Who's your favorite YouTube reselling channel currently? From Canada. Okay. Well, I watch uh, Chris, the treasure chest um that he does a, a live show with oh come i forgot his name he also has a youtube channel antique and i can't remember now i feel bad i'm sorry uh, but i watch chris i know there's a lot of channels in canada there's so many channels about reselling it's crazy now it's insane everybody's wishing you happy birthday chris but that's not that chris Can you tell Ruby I said hello? Ruby, hello. Say hello, Ruby. She says hello back. She'll scream in a second, watch. Is number one item sold on eBay still the face cream? Uh, I mean, cosmetics are good. I don't know if it's a number one thing. I do sell a lot of cosmetics, great profit, easy to ship, easy to store, you know, so. Oh, got you. So, Tommy, thanks for uh, letting me know. No, sorry, question came from Antique and Profits in Canada. I wanted to know if favorite reselling channel bad wording. Okay, so that's what I was looking for, that name of the channel, Antique and Profits. A relatively new channel, lots of knowledge. He does the show with Chris. Two good guys. Uh, love watching you guys. Do I have any Marilyn Monroe stuff? Uh, not a whole lot. Do I take Ruby home? No, she actually stays here. Both Honey and Ruby stay here in the shop. Um, the uh, Ruby stays in her cage and Honey stays in her room. Uh, I can't let her roam around because she'll turn the alarm on. We have sensors throughout the shop um, and she will, uh, she will turn that thing on so she stays here in her room. Man, there's so many people here. I'm trying to read the chat, guys, a little bit here, but it moves so fast. Floor finishing touch. The floor is the finishing touch. What? I, I'm sorry. Oh, paint your floor. Why? You want to come and paint my floor? I'm not painting my floor. I like it the way it is. It gives a nice character. What's wrong with this floor? What's wrong with this floor? Look at that. Beautiful floor. It gives a nice character to the store. Just me being funny. What is selling good for you now? Um, well, like I always guys say, number one seller in the shop is probably knives. I sell a lot of knives. Retro gaming systems are selling good. Um, vintage and antique stuff is so so slow movers, but um, tools we sell a lot of tools, electronics, 
but number one seller is uh, is knives. The floor looks great. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> the handmade truck I send you is one of ten made, and the box sides are backwards. Well, Joe, you didn't see my last video. I turned them around. See, let me show you. Are they correct right now, Joe? Let me know. They were like this, and I turned them around. They're supposed to be like this, right? Or am I wrong? Am I doing something wrong, Joe? It's a beautiful truck. You did a lot of work. Lots of work, all handmade. It will sell, Joe. Don't worry about it. Everything sells eventually. You know? Okay. Uh, let's see here. Craigslist Hunter, I started a business in Japan and we mainly export car parts and I run our own website and not on eBay, which helps avoid scammers. PayPal always has my back. Good for you. I mean, I recently uh, kind of stopped using PayPal because PayPal switched to manage payments on eBay. Um, but PayPal is good, always been good. Stop worrying about scammers so much, you know? I mean, yes, you will get here, some in there, part of the business, but people worry about that stuff too much. I painted your blue walls in Vicky's office. What do you mean, Glenn? I don't get it. I live in Lake County. Need to stop by one day. Absolutely, stop by. Eric from Brooklyn. If I buy a thousand dollar worth of inventory, would you take me fishing? <laughs> Long drive, but see Ruby and Honey would be my pleasure. You don't have to spend, just come say hello. You know, I'm actually excited. Hopefully next weekend I might get out for season open opener for walleye Saturday, Sunday with my buddy. We're going to go fishing, take out my boat for the first time this year. Uh, what about the bayonets? What about them? Uh, watch the beginning of the video. The first probably 20 minutes to half an hour of the video is uh, me showing off the knives that came in. Do you worry do you worry about customers harming honey? No, not really. Most of the people are extremely friendly with her, you know? And you know what? Just like any, any animal, she can sense. If she doesn't like you, she stays away from you. The animals can really sense if somebody is good or not, you know? So right baby? Yeah. Yeah, she's special. She's special kitty for sure. No, I don't worry about that, you know? We have her now for about a year and a half. She's two years old now. Joe, what are you saying? The box lifts and dumps and it's a real license plate. Yes, that license plate on that truck is from Wisconsin. Yeah, I seen it, very cool. Okay. We love your fishing trip videos. More, please. You know, I, I, I probably will make one or two videos this year and, and kind of put them in here. I try not to mix it up too much because most people, they come for this content, right? About buying, selling, reselling, what happens in a shop. About, you know, these characters and stuff. So I tend to not put too much about, you know, traveling, but I, I'm sure I will put a couple of videos. Honey is the star of the show, for sure, right? People love honey. I love my animals, too. Do you miss Adrian? I talked about it earlier. Yes, I do miss Adrian. Remember, we're not only business partner. We were, you know, very good friends for 20 years, so... <laughs> That's funny. Next time I go to Chicago, I'll visit the shop for sure. 
We're about 45 minutes northwest of Chicago. Do you sell many older camera lenses? If so, which brands? You know, uh, very picky when it comes to cameras. And 90% of the time, if we get something good, it will go online, it will go on eBay, not in a store here. In a store, extremely hard to move that kind of stuff. You know, the, the eyeballs on eBay for vintage cameras is probably the best way to go. Any stuff like that, because it's here in the shop, it takes very long time to move that stuff. What makes you angry? You always seem so upbeat. We love it. Uh, not many things, you know. Just... Yeah, I I don't get upset very often. I mean, I, I, I will if something is, is, you know... I don't know. It really it takes a lot to piss me off. I'm really upbeat guy most of the time, you know. So... What makes me angry? Stupid questions on eBay. People asking because they don't read. That what what makes me angry. Have you sold anything worth over five thousand dollars before? Yes, quite a few things. The latest thing that I sold that I hand deliver actually all the way to um, North Carolina was the the Comiskey White Sox, uh, Charles Comiskey Journal when they went around the world back in 1913 or was it 14? 1913, I think. Um, that sold for pretty penny, over 20,000 and it was hand delivered. Pete, what was the most weirdest item you sold recently? I don't know. That's a weird question to ask because we get, uh, I mean, we get some weird stuff, but most of the stuff that comes in, it's just the usual, you know, the, the, the cell phones, the retro games, like weird, weird. I don't know. I got another bottle. The spinning bottle, that's pretty weird, that hangs in air, the Bud Light. I sold one. I showed off that on a video. I don't know if it's on. Let's see if it's... Yeah, it's on. It's not spinning, though. I don't know if it's weird. It's kind of unusual. Oh, this bottle spins in the air. So it's not connected on top. It's not connected on the bottom. Kind of cool piece. From what I heard, um, Bud Light only made like two or three hundred of these, mainly uh, for display and some major events and things like that. Pretty cool piece. How much I'm asking? Not cheap. It's 200 bucks. And uh, this is the second one. First one sold immediately, and this one has been here for a few days now. I do love the dumpster diving videos. Yeah, I might, in the summertime when it gets warm, I might do a couple more dumpster diving videos. You never know what you're gonna find doing those. You know what, guys? I've been on for hour and 20 minutes. That's kind of long. Would you open a shop in a Chicago? I had shop in a Chicago that we actually closed down three years ago. Uh, it was open, if you go back, in, way back in the archives, You'll see the whole process. Us opening the shop, filling up the shop, dealing with the shop, and eight months later closing the shop. Would I do it again? Maybe. Would I do it? Somebody's knocking on the door and we are closed. Yeah. Um, would I do it again? Maybe. I would do it totally different now. Uh, and I would do it in totally different location if I would ever put something would be right directly downtown Chicago somewhere nice small tiny shop um, maybe one day I don't know 
the, the, the second shop that we opened it was on a very busy street. It was in Chicago. It was on a border of Chicago and Norwich, which is like the first suburbs right by O'Hare Airport. But it was a bad location overall, bad location. I learned a lot. It gave me a lot of experience going through the motions of opening that second shop. And uh, if I would do it, I would do it totally different now. When did I move to US? Uh, probably a whole nother video. This a long time ago. I came here when I was 13, back in 1984. So it's been a while. Yeah, Tommy, I'm sorry. I, you barely can keep up with all this spam. So I really appreciate you, buddy. Uh, Tommy Bernard has been the moderator here. Um, and you know Tommy and Tracy they do a live show a couple times a week mainly on Tuesdays and I think on Saturdays at 9 p.m. go check out Tommy Bernard live show uh, I'm always in there popping in as well because I love listening to them cool show cool show um, guys I think I'm gonna end it right here I appreciate everybody coming by over 600 people watching um, thank you so much and one more time Chris, buddy, if you're watching, Chris from Chicago, happy birthday. Happy 59th birthday to you, buddy. You got a few years on me, but your wife reached out, Molly. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. I appreciate it. And I will catch you on the next one. Cheers. Say hey, bye. Say hey, bye. Say bye. Box, of course. Box is the best. Box is the best. Yeah. What are you doing? Look, look at all the damage. Look what you're doing. Yeah. Bye, guys.